Apple is about to make a huge announcement. The iPhone 15 is getting a totally new design, a brand new port, and an all new app store that might just destroy your iPhone. So let's talk about the big drama happening in the Apple world right now. Let me talk about all the big changes coming to the iPhone 15, the major announcement for iOS 17, and why Apple is going to have to admit that they have been wrong all along. If you know anything about Apple, you know they're a company that does what they want to do when they want to do it. They're ultra rich, they're very successful, and they literally have hundreds of billions of dollars in cash at their disposal, probably sitting in some super secret Apple branded bank vault somewhere. And basically since the beginning, or since Steve Jobs sort of reclaimed his title at Apple, it's always been Apple's way or the highway. They always know best. If you wanna use a Mac or an iPhone or an iPad, you have to play by Apple's rules. You've got to live in Apple's super secret, super controlled walled garden. And even when customers pleaded for Apple to make changes or bring new features, they never really listened because again, they always thought that they knew best. But all of that is about to change and Apple is really, really not happy. The EU is forcing some major changes in the tech industry as a whole, and two will significantly impact Apple. One is forcing the change from Lightning over to a more common, more standard USB-C port, and the other is one that would force Apple to allow apps to be downloaded outside of the App Store, basically the ability to sideload apps on your iPhone, something Apple has been against since the very beginning. Okay, before we even go any further, you might be asking the obvious question. Why should you even care about this? Well, the big argument from those in favor of this legislation is that Apple has so much control, they have so many restrictions on these apps and developers that allowing for an alternative way to get these apps would allow for the apps to be better, maybe more powerful, and maybe even cheaper as well, because being outside the app store means they don't have to give Apple their mandatory 15 to 30% cut of any purchases made to get the app or inside of the app. So in theory, you could get better games, better uh, widgets, better utilities, just better apps on your iPhone that give you sort of more control. And also if those developers pass the savings on to us, then we could get maybe apps for 15 to 30% cheaper. So you could save money on the apps and subscriptions you're already paying for. But Apple is very, very against this because they say that allowing these nefarious third-party apps could totally break your iPhone. And I won't bore you with an in-depth history lesson here, but since the beginning, Apple has been touting the App Store as the safe place to get apps. Nothing you're gonna get on here is gonna be nefarious. It's all gonna be easy to use, easy to download, and Apple makes everything very, very simple for a price, of course. And some of you might remember that jailbreaking was a very popular way to get around Apple's very uh, restrictive practices. There used to be a little thing called Cydia that you could get on your phone that would basically allow you a third party app store with a bunch of different tweaks and customizations you could make to your phone, different apps that could do a lot of really cool things because they didn't play by Apple's rule book. And for years and years, Apple was playing this cat and mouse game with the jailbreak jailbreaking community and uh, sort of their own rules. Someone would make a jailbreak, Apple would patch it, they do another jailbreak, Apple would patch it. It got so sort of commonplace, you might remember back, what was it, I don't remember the year, but you could basically walk into a store, go to a jailbreak me website, and literally jailbreak a phone within 30 seconds. It became such a common thing that you'd often walk into an Apple store and the phone you were using, like the demo phone on the table, was jailbroken. This was a really huge issue that Apple hated and they did everything they could and spent millions and millions of dollars to make sure that jailbreaking was stopped entirely. And to make a long story short, you guessed it, Apple won for the most part. Jailbreaking is still sort of around, but it's really not a thing, thanks in part to a couple of things. One is that Apple has really made uh, jailbreaking much harder to do, but also to Apple's credit, they have made iOS more customizable. Now, of course, you've got an always on display on the 14 Pro, you've got widgets, uh, you've got uh, different controls and APIs, but the big problem still stands is that Apple is the gatekeeper for your iPhone. Even though you paid a thousand dollars for your iPhone, Apple still controls what apps can go on your phone and what can't go on your phone. That is of course, 
until now. Alongside the launch of iOS 17 and the iPhone 15, this new legislation would force Apple to allow for this third-party app store to exist, or at least a way to download apps on your phone and use them that doesn't flow through Apple's walled garden app store. And in theory, this would be a good move for us. It would give us more control over the phone that we spent our hard-earned money on, and it would allow us, in a sense, to possibly customize it and uh, do things that Apple wouldn't normally let us do, thanks to these uh, uh, sort of third-party apps that we get outside of the App Store. The problem, though, is that by doing this, one of Apple's big points is that you definitely increase your risk of having a virus or a malware or some sort of a nefarious program on your phone because Apple wasn't able to vet it. And again, the other obvious problem with this that Apple really doesn't like is that having an app outside of their App Store means they don't get their piece of the pie. They don't get their 15 to 30% cut. So that means if a really popular game that was making Apple a ton of money with that commission was to leave the App Store tomorrow and people could just download it directly, they would save themselves anywhere from 15 to 30%. They'd get to keep that money and Apple wouldn't get a piece of that success, something Apple really is not happy about. But of course, the other side of this coin is not only people who want more control over their phones, but there's a ton of corporations that absolutely hate Apple that would love to see this move. You've got Apple's biggest enemies like Facebook, you've got Snapchat, you've got Epic Games who would love to have this happen because they could totally bypass Apple's strict rules and be able to release apps on their own timetable. Maybe they could sort of get around some of Apple's app tracking transparency and privacy rules. And also they would spend millions and millions of dollars to make it really, really easy to download your favorite app right from their website. That's one of the big questions right now is if this was to happen, how easy would it be to download an app from a third party website? Is Apple gonna make this super complicated? Whatever the case may be, you better bet that some companies like Facebook will literally throw money at this problem to make it as easy as possible for you to bypass Apple's rules to get their app really easily installed on your iPhone. But as great as this might sound, Apple probably isn't going to let this go down so easily because they have a couple options of things they could do to make this technically possible, but not really possible. For example, I could completely see a world where Apple makes this as difficult as possible for those looking to skirt the rules. So maybe you could get an Instagram that was not in the app store, but if you tried to open up the app and post a story, your camera or microphone wouldn't work because Apple restricts those features to only being uh, able to be used by apps that live in the app store. Sounds vindictive, but if you know anything about Apple, I certainly would not put it past them. The other part of this EU legislation that's a lot less controversial is the forcing of Apple to move from Lightning over to USB-C, sort of getting one standard cable to rule them all. That is rumored to be happening with the iPhone 15, and uh, like it or not, looks like it's gonna happen, and I actually think it's sort of a good thing. So a win there for us, and uh, not great for Apple. There's also the obvious question of what if Apple just didn't comply? Apple has been known to skirt the rules for years. They've been known to pay whatever fine they have to pay, pay the penalty to sort of uh, do what they wanna do. In this case though, it's reported that if Apple doesn't uh, comply with the rules, they have to pay 20% of their global revenue, which in this case would just be a small amount, like $80 billion. And this sort of leads us to the bigger question of this video, and that is, who's the real winner here? Is this going to stifle Apple's innovation? And if they're being forced to make changes on a timetable, uh, is that a good thing? Does it sort of ruin some projects they could have? Because, you know, maybe Apple's working on a better port or they're working on some new technology and putting these roadblocks in place and these restrictions Apple has to follow maybe takes time and resources away from another feature or just sort of hurries development in giving you something that complies to the laws but not necessarily a good feature because there's a difference between having a good feature that's useful and just something there to comply with a checkbox for some sort of regulatory rule that Apple is just being forced to follow. The other part of this as well is that Apple might just play the move of complying, but just barely complying to fit the laws. Like I just mentioned, maybe they allow for apps to sort of uh, be able to be downloaded outside the app store, but you're getting a lot of limited functionality. Or for example, they do put USB-C on the iPhone, but with the iPhone 16, they've begin to totally remove the port. We do know that Apple is testing a portless iPhone. This has been a rumor for a while. And technically, would this sort of break the law? Because isn't the law that there's gotta be a standard port, but if there's no port at all, and Apple sort of gets the wireless charging only phone they've always dreamed of, 
sort of that's Apple being a little vindictive that if we can't choose the port we want, we're just gonna remove the port and call it a day because we're just gonna accelerate our future plans and this is just what you're gonna have to have. Now, with all that being said, while the iPhone 15 getting USB-C seems like it's sort of a done deal now and it's gonna happen to all iPhones around the world no matter where you are, this side loading of apps might only apply to iPhones in the EU, that iOS 17 is gonna have this feature, but it's gonna be uh, geo-specific, which sort of maybe might lead to some people importing EU iPhones to other parts of the world if Apple's gonna restrict it just to that area and they know where you are. But it is important to note that while this is a new law, it's not gonna to apply to every single iPhone. Maybe Apple brings this feature to all iPhones around the world because it's just easier to do it that way, or they will comply with the law, but just do it to those phones in that region of the world, just doing the bare minimum to uh, appease uh, the uh, lawmakers, and that's sort of the end of that. So I'm curious, is this a big deal for you guys? Is it something you care about? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Do you think Apple should open up the iPhone, make it more customizable, and allow you to sort of put what you want when you want it on there, sort of like you can on the Mac? Or do you think Apple is an important gatekeeper protecting us and keeping the bad stuff out, and it's worth the price to sort of have those safe apps, even if they do take a percentage of that. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think Apple's doing the right move, the wrong move? Do you agree with this new law? Let me know down below your thoughts on this and do you think we're gonna see it with iOS 17? Uh, I'm curious, let me know down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld and I'll see you all in the next one.